Good evening and welcome to another episode of My Future. I'm Ruven Eko and this evening we're joined by businessman Frank Wuyanga, Zimbabwean born and raised to spend a lot of time outside of the country as well, a lot of time in England and uh, he's definitely one of those cultured gentlemen who has uh, dabbled a lot in different areas of business. Uh, many of us have read about him, many of us have forged our own opinion of him based on what it is that we've read. Oftentimes when you go on the internet and you look up the name Frank Wuyanga, the newspapers, especially local ones have a lot to say about him. There's words like fraudster, words like uh, controversial that surround his name when you look him up on the internet. So, Mr. Frank Muyanga, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we have a number of instances where we have read about you, we have forged our opinions, and one question I'll ask you quite broadly is, is what we read who the man really is? I think um, reading is good but I think one should go a bit deeper than just reading and understand one's persona, mm. um, one's character and one's being. I think papers will write, journals will get busy but it is not always correct, it is not always concise and, mm. and, and it is what it is. Mm. Okay, so we need to dig deeper, which is hopefully what we'll get to do with you this evening. Oh, Find out you. more than, than what meets the eye. <laughs> um, so we have um, a recent case which came out in the Herald newspaper um, where, you know, you have been through many court cases in your life. Um, do you remember how many to date? Do you keep track? Well, what I do know um, from my limited memory is that we... we we as an establishment, myself and several other mm. establishments that I relate, own or part of, have over 200 cases in, in, in different courts. Wow. Um, and this was only um, highlighted to me by someone that is within the legal fraternity of the establishment. Right. So understanding how this unfolded, you were in the newspaper, your name was cited in the newspaper in this particular case, and you were not even present in court for this hearing. How does that happen? Yes, I draw focus to the article in the Herald yes. not so long ago, yes. maybe about a week or two mm -hmm. ago, where two weeks ago. they alluded to the fact that I had lost a case in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. That is not factually correct. Mm -hmm. So what did you do about that? You read about it? And I read. One of my friends actually sent mm -hmm. me a text message. Uh, so I woke up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, there's my phone, looked at the message, boom went onto the link and I was astonished because I right. did not know about the proceedings. I was not cited. I was not present mm -hmm. and I was not a part of that particular court case. So, um, you know, obviously it's a constitutional matter that will have to be dealt with through the constitutional um, system, mm -hmm. uh, through the courts and, and we'll see what, uh, what comes of it. So this particular case that we're talking about in the Herald is one of many and there are many cases as well that you say that you haven't even had the opportunity to provide as much evidence as you could to cases because the system doesn't allow you to. Do you want to elaborate on that? I think the system is, um, is, is, is within itself, mm -hmm. um, for the lack of a better word, faulty mm -hmm. in terms of the cascading. Um, and the, the, the justice delivery system doesn't, um, does, it's, 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 it's got different fragments and, 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 and comes together. So you've got right at the top, you've got the Constitutional Court, mm -hmm. um, you've got the Supreme Court, you've got the High Court, you've got the Magistrate Court, then from there you've got the National Prosecuting Authority mm -hmm. and then the police and, and everything mm -hmm. else. And so when we that, speak of the system, we're talking about that whole structure? Yeah, when you talk about the system, you're yeah. not talking about one person. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a, it's it's a system, entity. yeah. Mm. And that hasn't been favorable to you. You've not been able to submit evidence. Because from what I understand, as a businessman, okay. there is success in what you do. And I know one of the things that you do do is you take note and record every single transaction that you have ever done. From as far back as I don't know when, but I know that you've shared with us some information from as far back as the early, you know, 2000. Well, I mean, as a victim of crime, mm. one approaches a police station and... Right. and, and uh, records the statement and when they record the statement the progression is supposed to be statement is recorded uh, police call in the accused the accused is questioned and then they establish whether or not there's a prima facie case mm -hmm. against the accused mm -hmm. if there is no prima facie case then they'll advise you that we will take this docket 
for review to the National Prosecuting Authority. If the National Prosecuting Authority feel that there is no case, they will not prosecute. If they feel that there is a case, they will prosecute. Mm -hmm. And it will now go to the Magistrate's Court. And then the Magistrate's Court will make a determination on the matter right. through a trial or otherwise. Mm -hmm. So you feel that this uh, process has been stifled somewhere along the line? I think, look, Zimbabwe is a special country with very educated, I mean, the human development index in this country mm. is very high up mm. there. I cannot fault the Supreme uh, Court um, judges. Mm. They are of the highest um, quality mm. and, and you high court the same. So um, there's no, I mean, in what you're saying, you're insinuating, of course, that there are levels of corruption, not necessarily faulting the Supreme Court or any of the courts, but looking down as you come down the ladder, that there are areas where there are definitely loopholes, where cases such as yours and any other victims in Zimbabwe might face the same challenges that you do in trying to be heard. I do think a lot of people are facing the same challenges that I do. Mm -hmm. That is why there is now um, limited investment into our country. People basically do not um, believe that the justice delivery system at those levels, a lot of people as it were, mm -hmm. is effective, efficient as it, right. as it should be. So yeah, I think there are, I, I would be going too far to, to condemn the, the, the police in, in, in my personal capacity, mm -hmm. but I think there have been subjects and talk about corruption, mm -hmm. nepotism, um, failure to execute mm -hmm. duties, and I think that whole arrangement to some extent needs to really be looked at. Right. Yes. Now you're a an international businessman and from what you're saying, I mean you're speaking from a position where you're calm as you're executing what you're saying right now but naturally when you're coming out as you said with over 200 cases against you, right, at any given time surely there's some element of influence that you have maybe on colleagues outside and uh, when people are outside looking in, looking to invest in Zimbabwe, this is definitely, do you think it is, um, you know, affecting foreign direct investment? It definitely is. I think it definitely is. I think mm. the breakdown in the rule of law in any country, yeah. whether you're in the UK, whether you're in the US, mm. whether you're in Asia, um, it's going to affect investment. I think mm. you'll recall the miscarriage of justice is not um, unique to just Zimbabwe alone. Right. Um, if you go to the United States, you will find as early as um, uh, as, as early as um, the, the, the the revolution, mm -hmm. there was great miscarriages of mm -hmm. justice mm -hmm. in the UK during the Irish bombings, uh, the Birmingham Six, the uh, Jill Dando case, mm -hmm. you know, the Guildford Four. I mean, there is so much miscarriage of justice that we have in the world today. It may not be documented because remember the people that are suffering injustice don't have a voice. Right. You see, it's, it's very, Do very hard. Do you feel hard. you have a voice? Well, I'm in a different situation because obviously, you know, um, that's how I've been able to last so long and that's why, you know, it becomes What's very... What's your situation that would be different? I think, you know, I'm, I think my, my situation is different because maybe I have the means to be able to, to fight the situation. Mm -hmm. I have the abilities. I have. Are we talking financial means? Because naturally, not, there not, has to be not that financial. Weight no, 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 no. Mm. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a son of God, mm. and I believe very well in the Word of God, mm. and uh, that's why I'm, it's very difficult to get around me with all these innuendos and all these. Yeah. It's very difficult to get around me because mm. you know I'm structurally uh, planted in the Word of God. Mm. So finances and everything else come as a result of that. But I think there's a lot of people out there that are suffering these injustices and um, you know, sometimes I feel very sorry for them and it's, as, as I rightfully say, it's not only in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. it's right across the spectrum. Right. And, 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 but it's just that in this, in this light, it's affecting me in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. so that's why I mentioned the, the, the Re Zimbabwe Rural Republic law, yeah. Police. All right. Yes. We are in studio tonight with Mr. Frank Wiyang, and after the break, we're going to get into a lot more detail of the areas that he has revealed to us, that we're going to reveal to you, where there have been injustices served, where there are evidence of cases that he has rightfully recorded, what has happened, the transactions that have happened, and uh, we're going to try and understand exactly why it is that our rule of law, why our justice system, why our media portrays things that are not 100% as they are. So stay tuned for more of My Future. We'll be back after the break.
Welcome back to My Future. I'm in studio tonight with Mr. Frank Buyanga, and he's telling us a lot more than we actually meet when we open a newspaper or look him up online. Uh, we're talking about our justice delivery system. We're talking about print media and how one can easily become a victim of both. Um, but of course, this is open to your interpretation as we are getting to speak to him one-on-one -on -one and hear his side of the story outside of reading articles that sometimes don't even have a quotation from him. So, uh, Mr. Bianga, now we're getting into the more nitty gritty as we said before mr bianga has uh, he he records most of the transactions in fact all the transactions that you do right You've yes a significant amount a significant of the transactions yeah. yes right. what that showed me is that the people are not accountable for their actions mm -hmm. people get into agreements people are a party to a process and when it suits them they renege mm -hmm. and i mean you know, I recall listening to a speech by His Excellency right. where he actually spoke about this, where he said, we have too many people that are taking out loans from the banks and who do not deliver according to the promise. Um, there is a growing level of unaccountability mm -hmm. within our people. There's a growing um, passion for disunity and uh, the ideologies that we once had, the principles of loyalty, of dignity, mm -hmm. um, I think, have eroded. Right. So, as a people, we are more fragmented and apart than united. Mm -hmm. And these elements are the microcosm of the macrocosm. Mm -hmm. So, when we see the breakdown of social conduct, of the fabric of society, this is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. It's about people living beyond their means. Right. It's about people wanting a brand new car when they can't afford it. It's about people having two or three girlfriends when they can't afford them. It's about people having babies outside their marriages. It's, it's a whole c cocktail of things. Right. But that, that is not a, unique to Zimbabwe. It is not unique yeah. to Zimbabwe, yeah. but it has become abundantly clear that there is a rapid increase in this behavior. Mm -hmm over the years. Mm. Moral I mean, decay is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Zimbabwe is, 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 is a great nation. Mm -hmm. The Zimbabwean person, the genetics within ourselves are, 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 are second to none. But there are elements that have now dented, um, as you rightfully say, yeah. our morality, our uh, ethics, and, and this is what is affecting us today. Yeah. You should understand something. Mm. The justice delivery system is autonomous. Mm -hmm. It has, an, uh, it, 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 it does not relate to the executive. Right. So people have faith in the justice delivery system. Once the justice delivery system does not operate, it's a free for all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I it's mean, it's, 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 people take the law into their own hands. Right. So you find things happening and you don't know how they're happening. Right. But because, you know, when you grow up in a home, if your father or your mother does not relate to you in a manner that is con conducive to the humanitarian nature around you. You're going to be the same. Yeah. And that is what is happening. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to the video that we're going to show to you now. Um, the contents of this video obviously uh, have been privy to only yourself. Yes. Um, because these are the files that you keep for your records. So do you want to educate us on what it is we're going to witness um, in this particular video for that case that you said found you, you know, frustrated with the fact that you couldn't submit this evidence to, to the police? Oh, yes. Mm. What is the contents of the, of the video? I think the video recording mm. that I've submitted to yourself yeah. has an agreement to sale, yeah. a power of attorney to pass transfer, mm -hmm. a declaration by seller, an instruction to pay, noting the bank details of the person, and notice to vacate the person saying they will vacate the property. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say to you, I, I mean, I don't know how the courts look at an agreement to sale. But even from the Middle Ages, mm. through the Victorian era, an agreement of sale is an agreement of sale. So if a judge is going to stand up and tell me, or a policeman is going to stand up and tell me that, yes, they may bring issues that may implicate an agreement of sale, but it stands. Mm -hmm. So whether it's there today or whether it's there in 100 years, mm. or whether it's there in 500 years, it's going to be it's there. there. So if you, if, 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 if you think that agreement of sale is going somewhere, I think you're, you're misinformed right. because whether I am here today and I die tomorrow, mm. it will be here in 500 mm. years. Mm. So your great-grandchildren mm. will still have to face the calamity of the reality that right. you put yourself on. Right. So watch the video and see for yourself. I mean, it's evidence. It is Mr. Bianga in the video, um, you know, with, uh, undergoing this transaction. And it is very clear who the people in the video are. Their names are written on the documents as uh, described by Mr. Buyanga. So this is the kind of evidence that is available. Yet somehow, justice 
doesn't prevail. This session has been recorded. It's um, 17.15 on the 7th of July 2009. <coughs> Here we have an agreement of sale between Anabairam represented by myself, Frank Boyanga, for the said property. Measuring 3,984 square meters under deed of transfer number 4204 of 1980 that is a three-page document and it's um got there you have the purchase price of 10,000 us and at the bottom you have uh the the the, the, the initials then you have the last page the three-page document signed and frank Buyanga. can you confirm that you have read understood and signed that document ma'am yes thank you very much moving on from there you will be supplied with a copy of that document you then have a power for turn to pass transfer again from yourself to go properties again for the same property can you confirm that you signed understood that document you've obviously read through it then you have here <coughs> a notice to vacate the same state property uh, <coughs> again you've signed that acknowledging that you've received it can you confirm that you've read Anyone? understood and signed that document yes uh, following on from there you've got this uh, declaration by seller uh, who is in this case yourself uh, to for ten thousand dollars it's a two-page document with your initial on the second page um, with notes attached, the two-page document. Can you confirm that you've read, understood, and signed that document? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, and then we have a document here where you are instructing me. Um, you've, you've instructed me to send some money to. <laughs> Ten thousand U.S. dollars. Can you confirm again that you are instructing me to send this ten thousand for the sale of the same said yes. property? Thank you very, very much. I think that's it. Welcome back to my future. I'm Ravenna Ko in, uh, in studio this evening with Mr. Frank Buyanga. And uh, just before the break, you watched a video, one of the many videos Mr. Buyanga has recorded showing the transactions that he has undergone with various individuals. Um, and Mr. Buyanga, you were telling us earlier on why it is you started recording your transactions. Well, due to the pain mm. that I um, went through with that arrest, mm. I automatically discovered that there's great detail um, that one has to record in this transaction because you know you just end up being bungled up in prison mm. and and you have no defense right so I had to record each and every transaction that I've ever did actually I put a full CCTV mm. at all my properties right. that I was in right. um, and, and 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 I've tried as hard as I can to record mm. each and every transaction not so much for um, the for the day you might land up in court yeah but simply because it's it, it's it, right it protects my position right in the long term come what may yes mm. now on properties you know i mean you know many have also described you as a property mogul and i understand there are uh, there's a group of people out there about 40 of them that yes. have come together to fight you um you know regarding property yes. and saying that you know they did not uh, you know sign agreement of sales or whatever the case might be yes. how is it that you could have angered so many people out there because there are stories there that people say oh mr Buyanga took this from me mr Buyanga has changed my entire life mr Buyanga is a fraudster he's robbed me all these cases Indeed. i mean these are this I mean, is the, this this is is the not... cases that go around right but they've been going around because they've been quiet right in why fact, have you I'm been putting quiet? a stop to that. Why have you been quiet? I've been quiet because yeah. I have been raised in a family which is very, very modest. Right. My, my values, mm -hmm. my principles have come from my father and my mm -hmm. mother. Mm -hmm. And I have never wanted to have controversy around me. Right. But I'm putting a stop to that now. Yeah. So, okay, there seems to be a lot of... Um, 
you know, discrepancy mm -hmm. in everything that, you know, that you're going through and everything that you're describing and the justice system itself. These individuals that we said, you said call them 40, call them 100. In the same way that we're about to show some more evidence of one of the transactions you had, do you have evidence of each of the transactions with these people? Each and every one of them. And is, is it a video sort of evidence or is it paperwork? Because in the same way you're saying that there's fake documentation that was presented in front of a judge, who's to say that your documents are authentic? Um, well, as you'll see in these videos, mm. there is an original power of attorney post transfer, which I didn't sign. Right. But they purport to these judges that I, 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 I forged these documents. Right. They purport that I forged agreements of sale that they signed under camera. Right. And mind you, not only do they have signatures on those, I made them put their fingerprint. fingerprint uh, and the reason print. I put their thumbprint there is because some of them will say, I never signed this. So I said, right. put your thumbprint. Right. So that, you know, some of them genuinely forget. Remember, you know, the biggest pandemic of mankind is forgetfulness. <laughs> That's why people forget. Everyone forgets. But like you but said, well, property I'll, I'll, is a big thing. When I'll you put make... your whole entire life savings, that doesn't really apply. You know? Well, I mean, you know, obviously if you put your life savings and then yeah. you, you go over and you start your property and mm. you feel like you can jump over with another 40 people because of your numbers mm. remember this is herd mentality right so when they go around 50 or 60 they're marching down the road they think that they can cause change but you mm. can only cause change through a constitutional process right. you cannot change process you cannot change because you just woke up in the morning and are sure, frustrated. Sure, sure, sure. You have to look at the constitution. Right. You have to look at the index of the constitution. Right. You have to have the constitution your, as, your, as your Bible. And that's what allows you to move. If you do not look at the constitution and decide to make your own decision, good luck to you. Uh, good luck as well to um, you know, many businessmen in Zimbabwe, as we described earlier, and Mr. Mbiango is explaining that, there's so many of us that are falling victim to the moral decay in our country, where that now affects the entire system that we have talked about being the courts, being the police, and being us as Zimbabweans ourselves, and the businessmen involved. This video reveals a transaction, again, conducted under video, and Mr. Buyanga has many more of these, but still is being said that he does not have enough evidence, that his evidence does not hold, that you know it doesn't hold water, and uh, we want you to be the judge in this instance. It's 10 past 1, it's the 7th of August, September as it were, 2009. This session is being recorded. Here we have a document um, to address the about my so, well, can you confirm that you have received this, this, this uh, notice to vacate? Yes, I have received. Thank you. Here we have a power for 20 pounds transfer between yourself and your good investments limited. Yay for piece of land. So it will be lot 5, half, 4, 4, 30 Highlands Estate. Um, could you confirm that you have read and still signed this document? Yes, I have read and understood. Thank you very much. Uh, as a declaration by Salah, it's a two-page document, signature on the front page, with notes on uh, the second page, and attached with your uh, initials. Can you confirm that you have read, understood, and signed that document, please? Yes, I Thank you very much. Here yeah, you have an agreement to sell between yourself and to good investment submitted against a three-page document, initial on each and every page. La 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 la, mm. and that's the third page. Could you confirm that you've read, understood, and signed this agreement, please? Yes, I've read it. You are instructing me to send thirty-five thousand to your metropolitan bank account. Could you confirm that is the case, and you have instructed me to do that? Yes, that's correct. Thank you very much. Basically, these people call them. 30, 40, call them 100. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting at the Attorney General's office in 2013 right. where all these people came. At that meeting was Mrs. Ziambe, the DPP, Deputy Prosecutor, mm -hmm. was Chris Mtingadura, mm -hmm. Chief Law Officer, the Police, the Reserve Bank, Zemra, and over 100 people. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, in the Sindaba, if I may call it, mm -hmm. ask me the questions you want to ask. Mm -hmm. And they all say this, all they say. I answered all their questions. And uh, the, 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 the representative from the Attorney General's office, that was Ms. Yambe, said, look, guys, Frank has said today that give him what he gave you and he'll close everything. Right. This was in 2013. Right. The same letter was sent to these people in 2010 through my lawyer of record then, Manasseh and Manasseh, Manasse, Manasse, mm -hmm. right? Um, another letter through Alex Mambasasa was right. sent to these people. Right. Just give Frank back what you took from him. Mm -hmm. None of these people have ever delivered on that. Mm -hmm. So they've also let down the Attorney General 
which is now the prosecutor general's office in right. terms of their delivery because they simply have no money right but they they keep on stringing this thing along thinking that it'll come to some end so where thinking does that i'll be bungled like in prison right. someday and they'll see me in some van going off to chikuru i think that's obviously what they want that's to what see. they wish to see right because according but, but, to but them then they've the, been wronged by you in the same way you feel you've been wronged but by if the I, system if, if, if i uh, you're, you're you're perfectly right in saying that but again you need to understand this the system is there for everyone right it's not there for Frank, right. it's not there for them, it's mm. there for everyone. Mm. So when the system decides to take a neutral position, it's an issue. It doesn't mean that I should not interrogate and instigate mm. and continue to advocate mm. for justice. Mm. I want justice, mm. I believe in justice. Right. Naturally, we're going to have to have a part two here, not with Mr. Buyanga, but with a panel where we're going to look deeper into media ethics and the legalities around stories being published about you without your knowledge, being quoted or rather misquoted, and hopefully tie in the subject around print media as we continue on the journey with my future through the media industry here in Zimbabwe. Thank you thank so Thank you very much. much. Really yeah. appreciate it. I'm honored and um, thank you. That's it from me on my future tonight. Good night, be good. And if you can't be good, be safe.